How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here with Nature Now. So it's summer here in Pennsylvania and I've decided what better time than to dive into a fascinating group of animals known as beetles. Let's get rolling. Beetles are members of an order known as Coleoptera and there are about 400,000 species. In fact, they make up nearly 40% of all insects out there and about 25% of all the known living animals today. They are endoterragotes, and that's just a fancy word that means they have several distinct stages in their life cycle. First, of course, they start off as eggs. Then you have the larval forms, going into the pupa form, and of course, as we're all used to seeing, the adult stage. Beetles typically have hard exoskeletons, and they come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Like all insects, beetles display the main characteristics. They have a head, complete with antenna, and usually compound eyes. They have three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings, which I'll talk about in a second, which are all attached to the thorax. Like a lot of insects, they actually have two pairs of wings, but the first pair has evolved into hardened covers that protect the second pair of wings. That first protective pair of wings are called elytra. And if you watch closely as a beetle takes flight, you can see the elytra open up and the second pair is folded up underneath. That second pair will extend while unfolding to whisk the beetle away. And finally, they have an abdomen, which is often the larger or more robust segment on their bodies. This all gives us a wonderful variety of beetles to discover. Some beetles have rather unique textures on their exoskeletons like these ones here. While many of them have a smooth textured body. Like I said, there are many colors. There are yellow beetles, brown beetles, blue ones, which are actually kind of rare, iridescent beetles, red ones, speckled, striped, two-toned, and as you would expect, there's a lot of beetles that just come in plain old black, like the patent leather beetles, also known as best beetles. Now unfortunately, whether it's in their larval form known as grubs or their adult stages, there are many varieties that do harm commercial and agricultural crops. Some species prefer timber like sawyers, prionids, and more. Then you have plenty of species that prefer herbaceous and leafy greens like potato beetles and many more. Now, I don't want to focus this video on pests. There are all sorts of beneficial beetles out there. I'm going to cover the main characteristics of beetles and why they're so cool. And I'm going to include a lot of local species in my environment. There's one group of really cool and distinct beetles known as weevils. They have a long modified rostrum with a mouth at the tip. And my favorite species is the acorn weevil. Here's a link to a video all about the acorn weevil that I filmed last year. It's pretty fun. There are the large lumbering beetles known as stag beetles. They have those huge pincers or jaws at the front of their faces, often used for male-to-male -male aggression. Look at this one just plowing into the depths of the Earth's underworld. We have the very entertaining group known as the click beetles. When they're on their backs, they have a special mechanism that allows them to somersault high up into the air in order to land on their feet and flee from danger. That clicking is also a last ditch effort to remove them from the impending doom of a bird's gullet. They range from the smaller common brown click beetle to the giant click beetle known as the eyed oculatus. Those beetles are really cool and I love the fake eye spots on their thorax. If you ask any child, one of the first beetles they mention will be the ladybug, which of course is not a bug, but a beetle. They are the gardener's friend because they feed on aphids, which are garden pests. 
Another species which I really enjoy finding are the grapevine beetles. They have a really beautiful mahogany looking exoskeleton and I love to find them. Their legs are really neat iridescent bluish green color. Now there is no way I can fail to mention my favorite group of beetles, the fireflies, also known as lightning bugs, the Lampyridae family. Like the ladybugs, they aren't bugs nor flies. You guessed it, they're beetles. Sorry, but I mean how cool is it to have an insect that flies around at twilight flashing its butt as a form of Morse code in order to attract a mate for date night. They too are carnivorous and are in fact beneficial insects to have in our environment. Their larvae feed on snails and slugs and other soft creatures. Now maybe you've noticed their numbers are declining. That's mainly due to habitat loss and a lot of light pollution. I love the Lampyridae so much that I host a program on them every summer. Another really cool species are the tortoise beetles. These things come in all sorts of colors. So cool in fact that they should have their own video. Now here you go. This is a Volkswagen beetle and these things are actually really cool. You know you don't really see too many of these anymore. They're kind of disappearing and you know not entirely sure why. There is a newer species about. You know that's probably why it's more equipped to uh, handle the modern times. I recently published a video on another favorite species of mine, the dogbane leaf beetle. In my opinion, they are the most beautiful insect in all of Pennsylvania and perhaps the entire United States. Beetles, like many other creatures, will defend themselves in a number of ways. First, you have their primary form of defense that is the hard and often camouflaged exoskeleton. But then you have some species like the dogbane leaf beetle, ladybugs, and even fireflies that have foul tasting toxins or even outright deadly poisons that in some cases if a would be predator consumes them it will cause the predator to either get really sick or flat out perish. Now most beetles that possess toxins or poisons in their bodies will sport aposomatic coloration. That means they use brightly contrasting colors or patterns as a warning to would-be predators. Quick fact, lightning bugs are also toxic. That is one of the reasons they go about the landscape flashing those lanterns. It's just another warning to the would-be predators out there. It simply states, hey, I don't taste really good, you better leave me alone. There are many beetles that have formidable jaws or pincers on the front of their heads that can give an assailant a nasty pinch. Another form of defense that they just might utilize is sound. This brown prionid will scrape its long legs across its abdomen or back to create this amusing squeaking sound. It sounds funny, almost as if it's cussing to itself over the fact that it was disturbed. The best beetles let out a bit of a hissing sound by rapidly forcing air in their abdomens out of the spiracles. Back to the Idoculatus, a lot of time it just has to rely on those big fake eye spots on its thorax. You know, when something comes along to eat it, say a bird or a mammal or something, it sees those fake eyes and it's like, wait a minute, is this a snake or a bird or, or what? Maybe it's not a meal after all. And I almost forgot, another form of defense that a lot of beetles actually use is the art of playing dead. And nobody does it better than the death fainting beetles. When they're upset, they'll play dead a lot like a possum. They just roll over and stick their legs up in the air, sometimes for hours on end. A cool fact about them is that they have this special waxy coating on their bodies that helps them conserve moisture. They can survive in the desert for long periods of time with very little water due to the benefits of that waxy coating. Beetles have a wide variety of dietary preferences. There are species such as some weevils that want nothing but plant and herbaceous matter. And then you have species that are strictly carnivorous like the incredible and ferocious tiger beetles. Those things are very fast and pound for pound they set the speed record. If you're lucky enough to get close to one they are amazing to watch. Also we can't forget the variety of decomposers out there either. Those are creatures that feed on carrion, detritus and other organic matter and in some cases that even includes dung or scat. 
Some examples include carrion beetles and scarabs. I remember the first time I saw a scarab or dung beetle in person. The texture and color of their exoskeletons was really cool. It appeared to be made out of a metallic primer. I suggest that if you have the opportunity, take a close look and admire them. The mighty and also rather unique looking carrion beetles are also pretty cool to look at. They're kind of reminiscent of fireflies, just bigger and a lot wider. They feed on, well, you guessed it, carrion and other rotting matter. Let me tell you, if it wasn't for all the decomposers out there, the world would be riddled with bacteria, disease, and illness in a big way. Beetles have even adapted to the aquatic environment, yet they are still tethered to the world above by relying on the ability to hold their breath or trap air against their bodies. If you take the time to watch, many beetles will put on quite an entertaining show for us to enjoy while they go about their beetly ways. Like these male broadneck beetles in combat, or these large stake beetles excavating a burrow, or even this tiger beetle swinging his jaws while preparing for the hunt and warning me not to get too close. It's also fun to watch a lot of beetles trekking along while they're negotiating the landscape about them. Next time you are visiting a woodlands, try looking under a log or a piece of loose bark, or try finding a sunny meadow with plants and flowers and see what beetles you might discover. I am sure that you'll discover several species that'll captivate you with wonder and intrigue, or they might just steal your heart. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit. Chris Ignato, signing out.